everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can make amazing art if you're on a budget. So whilst I'm talking about that, I'm going to be painting this cat, which I did using an ink tense black pencil, white gouache and a white gel pen. Before that, I just wanted to let you know that I've started up a brand new Etsy store where I'm selling lots of animal watercolour art prints, including this cat that I'm painting in today's video. So you can get it in a range of different sizes and it's all on really high quality paper using really archival inks. So if you want more information and want to check out that, then I've left a link to the art store in the description below. So I've got lots of different pieces so far and I will be adding to it. I'm really getting into doing these animal watercolour pieces. I really love this cow that I've just done. It's one of my favourite. And so I'm going to be doing lots of larger pieces as well. So yeah, feel free to check that out. But let's get on with today's video. So like I said, I'm just going to be using one pencil and that is the Black Ink Tense Pencil. And this is actually the first time that I'm using these and trying these out. And the purpose of this video was I wanted to try and do something in black and white and get that sort of effect but I also wanted to show that you can make an amazing piece of artwork even if you have a limited number of supplies. So I'm only actually using four different supplies for this piece. So I'm using the black intense pencil, I'm using a fine liner pen, I'm using a white gel pen and also some white gouache as well. So they're not actually that many different products that I'm using on this and it's just to show that you don't need loads and loads of different supplies to get a really nice piece of artwork. You can get something really nice that you're able to sell and that is archival with only a few different products. So I definitely recommend buying a smaller amount of products but having really high quality products which means that your artwork is going to be archival rather than just buy a large set of really cheap pencils. Another thing that's really good if you're trying to do art on a budget is to keep it in black and white. So adding lots of different colours means that you need to buy more pencils, more supplies and it also kind of makes it harder so especially if you're a beginner and you're just starting out I definitely recommend perfecting your skills with black and white before you go and try to do colour. So with black and white it not only limits the kind of scale you're working in, you're only working in grayscale which makes it easier to judge shadows, highlights and that sort of contrast and the depth but it also means that you don't have to buy as many different supplies. So this kind of spans across different mediums. So no matter whether you're working in graphite or charcoal pencil, that's only grayscale anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But it just means that those types of products are a lot cheaper. So for example, graphite and charcoal pencils are much cheaper than coloured pencils because coloured pencils need so many different properties like having that wax binder so that they can blend and having the different colours and being light fast. So coloured pencils are a much more expensive medium to work in rather than graphite and charcoal pencils. Same thing for something like oil painting. With oil painting you need the good quality paint but you also need the mediums to blend that paint in and the canvases or whatever surface you're working on you might need to prime that surface. So again graphite and charcoal you only need the pencils and maybe an eraser and just the paper that you're using and the paper doesn't have to be that expensive for something like that. With coloured pencils though on the other hand it's important to get a good quality paper so that you can layer. So I definitely think think using graphites and charcoal pencils are the cheapest sort of medium to be able to work with if you're on a budget and also really want to achieve kind of high results with your artwork. So tip number one is to use graphite and charcoal pencils to start with until you get a bit more sort of money behind you and you can invest in say coloured pencils or even different paints because in my eyes, I think it's much better to have high quality products, even if it's in a small amount, rather than just buying lots of really cheap products. Because your artwork is not going to last, it will fade over time. And if you want your pieces to last, then it's better just to get a small range of the higher quality products. So again, I recommend working in grayscale. So even if you did want to work in watercolours, you would only need to buy something like a few different greys and black. You wouldn't have to buy lots of different colours. So 
it, the same thing with the ink tents. I'm just, you might just have to buy one black pencil and that's it. And then you can create something like this. You can do it with different animals. And if you'd wanted to work with a different color, then you can just get different ranges of single types of color and just work through with that color until you perfect it. You get a bit more money and then you can invest in different ranges of pencils. So if you're finding yourself wanting to spend even more time doing your art and really getting into it, whether it's a hobby or whether you want to kind of pursue it professionally, then you might want to kind of buy all these different products and you'll have a list of everything that you want to buy but at the start you won't be able to buy all of that so like me I didn't have all of the products that I have now straight away I've slowly built up the collection over time and I've bought a lot of it myself so as the years have progressed I have kind of whenever I've had a bit of money I'd buy a few different supplies here and there and they would add up and it builds a nicer collection or I'd ask for things for like Christmas or birthdays from different people just to help me out to build that collection. But I didn't have all of this straight away. So I didn't have the three different sets of colored pencils and all these watercolors and everything. No, a lot of that I've only just got recently because once you start kind of branding yourself and becoming more established, you'll have more funding to put into getting materials. But at the start, I only bought one set of the colored pencils. The Faber-Castell Polychromos were my first pencils. But before that, I just did a lot of work with graphite and charcoal until I felt like I was ready and I had the money to kind of pursue colored pencil work. So again, it's just a case of being patient, building up the collection over time and not expecting to be able to get everything you want there and then. But that doesn't mean that you should put off creating your art until you have those products and you shouldn't use materials as an excuse for why you can't create the artwork that you want to create. So I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, I can't create something like that because I can't afford the materials that you use. And that isn't something that should be limiting you. Your materials shouldn't limit you. If you can't afford the most expensive quality in the full sets, like I said, just go for one or two pencils in the black and white kind of spectrum and you will be able to get something like what I'm doing. So there's no real excuse that you should be able to use to say that the materials are limiting you. I feel like that's just an excuse people use because they don't want to kind of put the blame on themselves when really it's about you. If you are passionate enough, then you shouldn't let materials get in your way. There's people that make amazing pieces of art with like really unconventional different materials. So definitely don't let the materials that you use limit your creativity, limit your enthusiasm for the art and keep making art even if you don't have the highest quality. But I definitely recommend graphite and charcoal. They're cheap, they're easy to get hold of and it doesn't really matter too much what brand you use because they're all quite similar there won't be a massive difference like for example with colored pencils you can tell a massive difference between the cheaper brands and the more expensive ones but with graphite and charcoal you can you can get away with that also with watercolors the paper is the most important but you can kind of go for the cheaper sets of the actual watercolors especially if you're getting started one of my main tips is that if you are getting started and you know that you're not going to be selling your work, you're just kind of doing it for yourself to get practice and you probably will throw most of it away, then I really don't recommend kind of spending so much money on professional products straight away because you're just going to be wasting them and burning through them. So for example, if you're starting with watercolors, then you don't need to buy the most expensive watercolor paper going with the like the best sort of grain and like it's just important to get something that will be decent for what you're doing. But if you're just starting out and you know most of it's going to be thrown away anyway, then don't waste your money on really expensive products. Okay, so to kind of summarize, I think my main tips would be try working in grayscale. Also try to go for cheaper mediums like graphite and charcoal or even watercolour rather than stuff like acrylic or oil painting which takes a lot more different products. I also recommend building up your collection over time so just adding to it here and there. Anyway that's it for the art topic so to kind of sum up what I've been doing when I was painting 
was that I used the Inktense pencil first directly onto the paper and I did a very kind of light layer because what happens with these Inktense pencils is that it becomes really, really pigmented once you add the water. So I did a really light layer of pencil. I blended that out with water using a water pen. I then realized that you can see a bit of the grain underneath when you do it using that method. So I just started using the water pen directly on the Inktense pencil and then applying that to the paper. I kept layering until I got the depth that I wanted and created this sort of layered look, which I really liked. Then I went in with a fine liner pen to create the little fur details and little scribbles just to add a bit of interest. I went with the direction that the fur was going in. And then once I did that, I added a few little highlights with the white gouache. So I used the permanent white. I have listed all the materials in the description as well. And now I'm going in with a white gel pen just to add a few little whiskers and details. I used the white gouache as well to add some splatters using my paintbrush and I made sure the paint was really opaque for that and I created some splatters using the black ink tents as well. But that's basically what I did for this piece. I did use a reference photo. I did do my sketch beforehand. It is important to use a reference photo to see where the shadows and the highlights go. But yeah, that's basically it for this video. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed my little conversation and discussion, then feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on my future videos. So also I have left the link to my Etsy store in the description as well if you want to check that out. And also for you guys over on Patreon, very soon I'm going to be doing four really large watercolour animal pieces where I'm going to be doing the full real-time tutorials for you guys over on there, as well as lots of other tutorial series. So if you want to check out my Patreon, then I'll leave a link at the top of the description so you can check that out to get the real-time tutorials. Anyway, see you in the next video. Bye everyone!